Oh boy, Elliot Friedman came in here and dropped a bomb. This man is going to dress up as Robert J. Oppenheimer for Halloween because, man, this was a big one. You know, I was actually going to make a video about Elias Patterson. It was already pre-recorded, and I had it scheduled to go up today, Tuesday, October 10th. I was going to talk about the five-year-later thing and go over some opinions about Patterson from back in the day and how those contrast and compare to what we think of him now. But because Elliot Friedman had this bomb of a tidbit in the recent 32 Thoughts podcast, we are shelving the Pedersen five-year-later video to later in the week and instead talking about this panic mode situation that we have at our fingertips instead. Let's head over to a tweet made by Jason Bruff, because he tweeted out just a very simple clip of 2655 in the 32 Snapshots, 32 Thoughts podcast episode. It's a 39-second clip, and Jason Bruff says, Hey, stir it up, Elliot Friedman. The post went kind of viral on Canucks Twitter, and you had some people posting it onto the R Hockey subreddit as well. Seal Dodger 47 goes out there and transcribes what it is Friedman says about the Vancouver Canucks and Elias Pedersen. Since Pedersen came out and said, I'm not sure yet in regards to signing a contract extension, I think the Canucks have also indicated, you know what? We're not sure either. Because if there's any doubt that Pedersen wants to make a commitment, I'm not convinced that they want to make a commitment. So, in a nutshell, the comment here that's getting everybody alarmed is that comment about whether or not the Canucks would want to be committed to Pedersen, and how Friedman isn't all too sure that that's the case. And in a similar light, you could see some of the same comments on this post. Yeah, of course, the Canucks don't want to commit to one of the best up-and-coming centers in the game. Oh yeah, they definitely don't want to commit to one of their best players in franchise history. They don't want to commit to a guy who had 100 points last year. That's totally out of the question here, right? And at face value, it might seem super ridiculous for Friedman to go out there and even allude to this idea. Oh yeah, I don't think the Canucks are fully convinced they want to commit to Pedersen either. But if you look at what it is that he's actually saying, it makes a little bit of sense. Now, he bases this off of what we had talked about with Elias Pettersson earlier on in the offseason, how he doesn't really want to commit right away. He wants to see how the season goes. He wants to see how he performs. He's not going to really focus on this stuff during the regular season, which is totally fair. It's within his prerogative to understand the situation he is committing to long term. If Pedersen signs an eight-year deal, for example, that's the next eight years of his life he is committing to this hockey team, and it's fair for him to want to make sure that the team is going to go down a direction he feels comfortable with committing eight years of his future to. Even shorter term deals. Still, similar thought process behind it. He wants to make sure that this Vancouver Canucks team is going to be able to fulfill his needs. And when I say needs, I mean he's got a need to go out there and win championships, win awards. He wants to be a part of a winner. And if the Vancouver Canucks are not able to prove to Petey in this upcoming season that they're capable of fulfilling those expectations, then it's well within Petey's right to say, okay, no, sorry, I'm not going to sign here. Trade me away, or I'll sign an offer sheet. You guys can get some compensation, and we'll We'll be on our way. Of course, this is a very, I want to say maybe individualistic point of view is the way to say it. Like, obviously, Pedersen is a guy who was drafted by Vancouver, a team that gave him his chance to star in the NHL. But at the end of the day, he is still a guy himself. He is not the Vancouver Canucks. He is a player on the team, and he has a right to exhibit what it is that he is looking for in this league. And because of that nature of the situation, that is why Friedman is saying essentially, hey, because Pedersen didn't really commit fully, I don't know if the Canucks want to commit either. It's sort of a kind of petty chicken situation where it's like, yeah, because our guy doesn't want to commit to us, therefore we don't want to commit to you. How about that? The reply here says, I'm breaking up with you. No, I'm breaking up with you. It's kind of a, no, we're flipping the script onto you type of thing. Because I'm sure Elias Pettersson is a player the Vancouver Canucks want to keep around, but with that idea floating around that he is not ready to commit, it makes it easier for the Canucks to say, okay, well, if he's not ready to commit, we aren't either. Like, we'll commit to you if you're willing to commit to us, but if you don't, then we have no choice but to not as well. 
even if the underlying numbers, all the underlying data, the identity of this team, you could say it thrives through the 100-point score of Elias Pettersson. You could say that he is the best player this franchise has had in a decade. But Aquaman, Aquilini, Alvin, these guys are going to be stubborn. They're not going to give Pedersen the freedom to control this situation himself. And I'm saying that in a very antagonistic type of way, but I feel like that's the underlying feeling that I get from the way Friedman talks about this thing. A reply here in the comments of the R Hockey sub says that it's kind of like the Shanahan Dubas situation from last year. If you're not 100% sold on this and you want to stay, then we're not 100% sold on keeping you. We're not going to beg you to sign an eight year deal if you're not sold. We want players who want to be here. And of course, that's just one way to interpret it. You could talk about whether or not this means the Vancouver Canucks would not want to overpay Pedersen to keep him around if he gets like 100 points this upcoming year and he demands eight years at like. 14 million dollars or whatever if he is in a position to demand an extraordinarily high amount the Vancouver Canucks might not want to keep him around if Pedersen uses some sort of a negotiation tactic saying okay yeah well this offer sheeting team is giving me this amount of money which is more than what you're offering me Patrick Alvin I'm just going to go with the other team then it's easier for Alvin to say okay yeah we'll take the offer sheet we'll take the picks like they don't want to fully commit to a guy that is not fully committed to them, which is understandable, but at the same time kind of alarming because it makes this upcoming season that much more important. You gotta win over Petey this season, and you gotta do so in a way that makes him undoubtedly choose the Vancouver Canucks as his long-term team. Because even though he is an RFA, he still has some level of control as to deciding whether or not he plays in Vancouver next year, whether or not he is a Canuck for the long term. So for Elliot Friedman to go out there and talk about this on the podcast, I thought it was very illuminating. I was going to upload that Pedersen five years later video today, but we're going to move that later on because I felt like this was a more immediate type of topic to discuss. And for anybody who's going to go out there bashing on Friedman for bringing this up, I mean, in the very same podcast episode, Friedman says that he thinks Demko is winning the Vesna this year and that the Canucks make the playoffs. Friedman has been a good bro to Canucks fans the past few years. It's just very interesting to hear him say this thing, where it's like, yeah, he doesn't know if the Canucks are going to fully commit to Pedersen at this time. Because now, we got a bunch of rumors that are going to start up because of it. Everybody's going to talk about offer sheets, everybody's going to talk about trades. We made a few videos about Pedersen going elsewhere in the offer sheet scenario, and I mean... I guess we're going to have to make more conversations known about that as more articles come out, as more things get said in the media. We talked about Pedersen in Vegas. Did we talk about Pedersen in Boston? I'm not too sure. There are so many ideas that are always tossed around there that it's tough to keep a track of these things. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the idea that Elliot Friedman said here on the podcast that the Vancouver Canucks might not be all too committed at the moment to their number one center, Elias Pedersen? Do you agree with the perspective that this mostly stems with Pedersen not being 100% committed to the Canucks? Do you think this is all contingent on the way the season goes on? And do you see a world next year where Pedersen is outside of Vancouver? There are a bunch of comments in this Reddit thread replying and saying that this reminds them of the Jack Eichel situation. And if this goes anywhere near the Eichel territory where Pedersen ends up in Vegas, ironically playing with Jack Eichel, then you start to wonder what the hell's gonna happen here with this team. Like, so much of their success relies on Pedersen. I know you have JT Miller. I know you have Quinn Hughes and Thatcher Demko. Miller is a 99-point guy. He could be a 100-point guy, too, if everything goes right. But he is not Elias Pedersen. So... I'm not going to lie, my spidey sense is tickled a little bit. I'm feeling a little bit of danger from this situation, but we've got a year to go out there and analyze, work things out, and hear what the updates are. So for now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the idea that the Vancouver Canucks may not be too committed to Pedersen. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And bye.